from hurling bananas to a black piece of shit. These are the most racist moments in football history. And back in 1998, France was preparing to host the FIFA World Cup. And as hosts, you would expect the whole country to be excited and supportive of their national team. But you see, this team was multicultural. Some dudes were born in Africa, others had Caribbean parents, Argentinian parents, Armenian parents. And president of the National Front in France, Jean-Marie Le Pen, well, this guy was different. And he got the opportunity to give the team a winning pep talk. Je trouve que c'est tout de même un peu artificiel de faire venir des joueurs de l'étranger et de les baptiser équipe de France. Je constate que les, les joueurs des autres équipes chantent leur hymne national de grand cœur et à pleine voix. Alors je, je constate que la plupart des joueurs de l'équipe de France ne le chantent pas ou ne, visiblement ne le savent pas. He just murdered them. Dude criticized and abused these players because of their background? Ridiculous. So the boys decided, hey, let's just win this thing and shut all these stupid people up. And then history was made. They became known as the Rainbow Team. And the MVP? A son of Algerians. Yeah, that's some poetic beauty. Still, this wasn't going to be the last time French players were abused. And this guy, he was exposed on live TV. 2004, Champions League semifinals. Chelsea faced AS Monaco and lost 3-1, seriously compromising their chances to reach the final. And English commentator Ron Atkinson was covering the game for ITV. And after the match was finished, Atkinson thought his mic had been turned off. So when he was giving his opinion about Marcel Desailly's performance, the innocent-looking Atkinson revealed his true colors. <laughs> This is disgusting. At least this guy got busted and was sacked from his job. But losing your job is one thing. This next guy, he was threatened with death. In 2011, Anfield Road was packed to see one of the most anticipated matchups of the season, Liverpool versus Man United. And Luis Suarez and Patrice Ebra were having some heated exchanges. So when both were waiting for a corner to be taken, they had a small talk. And that's when things got disrespectful because Evra accused Suarez of calling him a And Suarez, he admitted it, but he argued that the word doesn't have the same meaning in Spanish. In any case, dude was busted, because English FA fined Suarez $90,000 and banned him for eight games. But no one was ready for what happened next. Because you see, Suarez was one of Liverpool's favorites, so Evra became a target of furious fans. He received death-threatening letters, and Evra, he really feared for his life. For two months, he had 24-hour security to protect himself and his family. But eventually, things cooled off. Until it was time for a rematch. Suarez had done his sentence and was ready to go. And at halftime, Suarez hit the ball at the United dugout, and there was a fight in the tunnel during the break. But in the end, a 2-1 victory for Man U gave Ever the perfect opportunity to celebrate with a lap of honor right in front of Suarez. Guess he was just happy to be alive. But you see, sometimes bigger actions need to be taken. And Didier Zakora just kicked his problems away, literally. In 2012, Fenerbahce faced Trabzonspor in the Turkish league. Things got straight up pretty heated. And after he fouled one of Trabzonspor's players, Emre Belezolo and Didier Zakora came face to face. Tension yine yükseldi. Zokora'nın yaptı bu hareket Emre Belezolo'na. Boom! And just like that, Emre became a ticking time bomb. He got banned for two matches, but his punishment wasn't enough. So when the two teams met a few weeks later, Zakora had a plan. And as soon as the match started, Emre got a glimpse of what he was getting into. Until finally, the bomb exploded. Dude probably got kicked more times in the ball than he actually touched the ball. Still, he finished the game, but for Musa Marega, it was game over. In 2020, there was a Portuguese Primera Liga match between Vitoria Guimarães and FC Porto. Porto were fighting for the league and needed a win to keep up, and Marega was determined. Dude was giving everything he had, so the home fans thought they should give their team some advantage, and decided the best thing they could do was to chant racist slurs against their former player. Yeah, Marega had played for them a few years before. Ridiculous. But Morega just kept focusing on getting the win for his team. And when he scored the winner in the 69th minute and pointed to the color of his skin to celebrate, 
that's when all hell broke loose. Jesus! And to make it even worse, when he complained to the referee about what was going on, he booked him! Morega decided enough is enough, and he left the pitch. His teammates tried to stop him, but Morega, he wasn't having it. And later that day, he made a point of showing off how he felt about the whole situation. Thank you for being racist. F now, one player leaving the field may cause some impact, but one guy did something so bad, it almost cost him his career. Back in 2020, PSG and Istanbul Basak Shehir faced each other in the Champions League group stages. And in the 16th minute, Basak Seir assistant coach Pierre Weibo was sent off after being singled out by the fourth official for saying some bad words from the bench. But you see, he didn't just single him out. And that was the biggest mistake of his life. Because when Demba Ba heard what he said, he was ready to get in on the action. When you mention him a white guy, you never say this white guy. You say these guys. So why when you mention him, listen to me. Why when you mention a black guy, you have to say this black guy. Couldn't say it better myself. Anyway, you were in the middle of the game, just focused on getting the job done, and now you're confused and trying to figure out what's going on. So everybody got involved. Managers, players, and when they found out what was happening, it was time to take out the system. So both teams refused to play until this dude was removed from the game. Class act. But this wasn't the first time we saw both teams calling it quits in support of one player. In a preseason match between Pro Patria and AC Milan in 2013, right from the first minute, Things got really ugly. Kevin Prince Boateng kept getting racist chants from sections of Pro Patria supporters, and by the 25th minute, he just snapped. Dude was fed up with the monkey noises, man, and he decided he wasn't going to play anymore. So all the players stood by his side, but the damage had been done. So I would say to everybody, if you feel that you are that you don't want to play in this in this moment anymore because it's like um, it's not nice, you're disappointed, you get angry. Definitely, I would tell them to walk off the pitch. Come on, man. But well, at least he wasn't alone. Because one guy had his own teammate telling him that he was abused. Because he deserved it. Yeah, insane. In 2019, Cagliari faced Juventus in Serie A. And Moise Keane was targeted by the home fans the entire match. But he was determined to shut these guys up. You know, giving a good performance. And mission accomplished. Because he scored in the second half. And then it was celebration time. He went over to the section of fans who were abusing him, showing who was owning them. And that's when his captain did the unthinkable. Because he pushed him away from celebrating. And first, I thought, yeah, okay, Bonucci is just telling him to keep focused on the game and keep shoving more goals up their asses. But then, it hit me. Is this dude for real? It's his fault? What a joke. But Moyes kept it cool, because his boys came ready to charge. Yeah, good luck when Balotelli sees you on the pitch. Anyway, this is just one guy being stupid, but this dude. Yeah, I can see the resemblance, and he was proud of it. You see, back in 2005, Paolo Di Canio played for Lazio, and Lazio's ultras are extreme right fanatics. So they were all just one happy fascist family with all members saluting each other. Yeah, I'm done with this guy, but Mario Balotelli, one, two, three. In 2009, Inter Milan faced Juventus for the Serie A in Turin, and the home fans were ready to send a message. There are no black Italians. But young Mario, he had Zlatan Ibrahimovic as a teammate, and he told him, dude, just keep your head up and silence them with goals. And Zlatan must be a great motivational speaker, man, because that's exactly what Balotelli did. He scored for Inter and celebrated with his arms held up, silencing Juve fans. But still, that wasn't enough. There were still some scores to be settled and Inter fans, they got their boys back. So the next time both teams faced each other, it was total destruction. Now that's some trash talking, but this wasn't the end for Mario, because in 2014, in a match between Napoli and AC Milan, Mario caught the headlines. Only it wasn't for his usual moments of craziness. No, Napoli fans just showered him with racist chants, and what happened? was really disturbing. Mario was crying. He felt humiliated. And the thing is, 
it gets even worse. Because if these two weren't enough, there was a third time. But now, Mario wasn't going down without a fight. In 2019, now playing for Brescia, Balotelli and his team were facing Chievo Verona away from home. And yeah, every time he touched the ball, you get the point. But Mario had taken enough. So when he got close to that section of fans, he poured out all his anger in one wicked kick. Some magic. Oh. You see, Mario, he's always had that bad boy attitude of being a tough guy. But deep down, he's just a regular guy like you and me. And he feels these things. It gets to him and it hurts him. After what happened to the last game, no? uh, I feel a little bit uh, alone. Heartbreaking. But long before Super Mario, there was Mark Zorro. And in 2005, Messina played a home game against Inter Milan. And Zorro was abused by the visiting fans in his own stadium until it got to the breaking point. And he just couldn't take it anymore. He burst into tears. Some players went over to Zorro trying to comfort him, and eventually he managed to finish the match. But the next time Zorro faced Inter... Peanuts and bananas are the pay for your infamy. I don't even know what to say, man. Because you see, the thing with racism, it's everywhere. And three months after Zorro, Barcelona were playing away to Real Zaragoza in La Liga. And every time he touched the ball, Samuel Eto'o was getting monkey chance. And you see, there's a limit for what a man can take. And Eto'o was done for. He wasn't taking it anymore, so he started leaving the pitch. No more. Some words are really powerful. And what this guy said in 2004 became one of football's biggest scandals. Spanish national team coach Luis Aragones was preparing his team to face France for the World Cup qualifier. So he wanted to give his players an extra boost. And Jose Antonio Reyes was a rising star, and he carried a lot of the Spanish dreams on his shoulders. But you see, at the time, Reyes played for Arsenal, and he was about to play against one of his teammates. And Henri, he had been dominating football for the past years. So Aragones wanted to make sure that Reyes was pumped and ready for the showdown. Wait, what? Unbelievable. You see, there's a line, and you've just crossed it, man. Henri was in complete disbelief, but he came up with a plan. And for that, he needed a team, a super team. And together with Nike, they created one of the most successful anti-racism campaigns. Stand up. Speak up. And the moment couldn't be more right, because just a few days after Aragones, there was a match between Spain and England. And every time a black English player touched the ball... Rio Ferdinand, picked up by Ashley Cole. Now some nasty shouts in Cole's direction there. The whole freaking stadium. These people have no limits. Literally. Because one time, one player got treated like an animal. Back in 2014, Villarreal faced up against Barcelona. And when Dani Alves was about to take a corner... What is wrong with these people? You don't even do that in a freaking zoo. But now this was a really tight spot. Danny had a decision to make, and what he did next was so big, it became one of the most iconic moments ever. Genius. And dude not only kept his cool, he inspired a new campaign. Because right after this, Neymar posted a photo on Twitter of him and his son eating a banana with the hashtag, we are all monkeys. And it went so viral, soon everyone wanted a bite. Yup, everyone had gone bananas, all thanks to Danny, the perfect anti-racism meme. 